Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of El Faso Whiteboard Biochemistry. Today, we're going to be talking about an introduction to a very interesting and highly tested topic, enzyme kinetics. Let's go. Okay, now we've gotten past that cheesy drum roll. Now, I know probably most of you are panicking because, you know, you're like, well, we didn't take glycolysis. We don't know what equilibrium constant is. We don't know what glucose 6-phosphate, fructose 6-phosphate, what's going on over here? Well, this is exactly what the USMLE and the other board examinations like to do to you. They like to distract you with things that are irrelevant to the question. What you need to do is you need to filter out what's important in this question. So when they're telling me that the reaction where glucose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 6-phosphate, you know, they're just telling me that there is a substrate and it's being converted to a product. That's it. I mean, that's all you need to know right now. Who cares if we're in glycolysis, gluconeogenesis, glycogenolysis, that all doesn't matter. And they're telling me that the standard free energy change or the delta G, now this is where the gist of the question is, that the standard free energy change is 400 calorie per molar. Now I want to ask you a question. Does that numerical value concern you? Exactly. It doesn't concern you. You don't care if it's 400, 500, 7,000. What matters to you is the sign. It is a positive number. So the delta G is positive. That's what matters to you. So what they're trying to ask in this question when they say the most likely equilibrium constant, they're just telling you where is this reaction going? Are we going from substrate to product? Are we going from product to substrate? Are we going in a reversible type of manner? Where are we going? And they're asking you about the concentrations. I want you guys to differentiate something. Concentrations of substrates and products and energies of substrates and products. These are different, and I'll explain why. Let's take scenarios. So let's say that delta G is equivalent to zero. If the delta G is equal to zero, that means that the energy of the product and the energy of the substrate are both equal. That means the reaction can go in either way. Since the reaction can go in either, either way, the initial concentrations of both substrate and product are also equal. So that means that the ratio between the product and the substrate over here, the product over here being fructose and the substrate over here being glucose, that means that the ratio between them is going to be 1. So since the delta G over here is obviously not 0, we can go ahead and exclude C from our answers. What if the delta G was less than 0? That means it's a negative number. So if the delta G is less than 0 and it's a negative number, that means GP, the energy of the product minus the energy of the substrate, is negative. That means the energy of the substrate is greater than the energy of the product. That's not what they're asking over here. What they're asking is where is the reaction going? Are we going from substrate to product or product to substrate? They're not asking you which one has a greater energy. If the delta G is less than zero, that means this reaction is what? It's spontaneous. And if it's a spontaneous reaction, that means this reaction will happen. We are going from substrate to product for sure. Tell me. Which one will have a greater concentration? The product. So the product concentration here is going to be greater than the concentration of the substrate. That means that this ratio will definitely be greater than 1. So let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Is the delta G over here negative? No. So we can go ahead and exclude D from the answers. This leaves us with A and B. Well, let me ask you a question. If the delta G which over here it is greater than zero. This means that this reaction is not going to happen. It's not spontaneous. The reaction is not happening. This is not happening. So the concentration of the substrate remains really high and it's higher than the concentration of the product. So if the concentration of substrate, which is over here glucose, greater than the concentration of the product, this ratio, product to substrate ratio, is going to be less than zero. The answer is B. It's not A, obviously, because 
if there is a standard free energy change over here, that means that there, it's impossible to have a concentration of zero for the product or the substrate. So this is also impossible to happen. So reviewing what we talked about last time, we said that reactions are divided into two important aspects. We said that there are the thermodynamics of the reaction, which govern whether the reaction will happen or not, and they're determined by the delta G, or the Gibbs free energy. And then we talked about the kinetics of a reaction, and we said the kinetics relate to the rate or the velocity, and we described them as the delta G++, or the energy of activation. And we said that enzymes decrease the delta G++. Plus plus. Now let's delve more into kinetics. All right, let's talk about enzymes and the relationship with substrates and products. So first of all, enzymes demonstrate what we call specificity for substrates. Well, what do we mean by this? Well, if we draw a primitive drawing of an enzyme right here and a substrate binding to it, we can see that there's sort of a groove. And that is what we call the lock and key method of enzymes. Each enzyme has an active site that really resembles the substrate structurally. And therefore, you have that specificity. And the specificity is important. You want an enzyme to catalyze that reaction specifically and produce a specific effect, that is, produce a specific product. You don't want enzyme catalyzing reactions all over the place. Otherwise, unwanted reactions will happen. Now we refer to the specificity as the affinity of an enzyme and we assess it by what we call the KM and we will delve into the relationship between the KM and the affinity later. All right, the next property is the maximum rate of a reaction. So the maximum rate of a reaction is governed by enzymes, right? We know that enzymes decrease the energy of activation. They don't alter equilibrium, they don't tell us if the reaction will happen or not, but if the reaction is happening, they'll tell us how fast is it happening. And what determines the maximum rate is the number of enzymes. More enzymes means more binding to substrate. And we assess this by what we call the V max or the velocity maximum. So these two properties are the ones that we're going to be focusing on right now. So now we understood the general properties of enzymes. There are things that we can alter when it comes to enzymes. Number one, we can alter the number of enzymes present, or we can change the shape of the enzymes. If we alter the number, what do you think happens? Exactly, there's an increase or a decrease in the Vmax. And if we alter the shape of an enzyme, we're changing the configuration, then the affinity will increase or decrease, and subsequently, the Km will change. So if we come over here and we draw an enzyme, now we said the enzyme has an active site, and we said that this active site is where the substrate binds. But there's another thing, in fact, and that is a cofactor drawn right here. A cofactor is usually a molecule that assists the enzyme with its catalysis, with its function. And cofactors can come from all over the place. They can be metal ions, for example. So when we talk about, for example, any oxidase enzyme in the body requires copper as a cofactor. For example, when it comes to collagen synthesis, lysyl oxygase, one of the enzymes responsible for collagen synthesis requires copper as a cofactor. Also, the second thing is vitamins. And vitamins, you're going to see this redundantly, that vitamins are important cofactors. Examples include thiamine. And when it comes to collagen synthesis, what do you think is an important vitamin? Exactly, vitamin C and its deficiency results in scurvy. So you can see that there are multiple vitamins involved. Even organic molecules can be involved, such as tetrahydrobiopterin. And tetrahydrobiopterin is involved in phenylalanine degradation and biosynthesis of catecholamines. Thank you once again for watching El Face a Whiteboard. My email is in the description. If you guys have any feedback, be sure to go ahead and hit me up, ilgamalalfaisal.edu. Uh, um, next time we'll be talking about uh, enzyme kinetic plots and we'll be making some very strong high yield physiological and pharmacological correlations um, in the next lecture. Till next time!